thing. So this is Green Mountain here. It's a loop. Uh, this is an area where there's been a number of these rent-to-own, uh, unclear uh, ownership situations. It changed hands recently. The new owner, Brian Millard, uh, basically, I think he's uh, uh, really trying to, you know, improve it, move it up. He's done something interesting. I think he's made a condition of the lease is you have to pay your taxes. If you don't pay your taxes, it can be cause for breaking the lease. Take it right. Park on the right is a different park? No, this here on the left, this is Green Mountain to your left, Bill. Now on the right, it's, it's a go. different park. Oh, you can't get through there. Okay. So I'll tell you what, why don't you drive around the circle? Okay. And this is yet another issue. I mean, basically, every park is supposed to have an entrance and an exit that are separate from each other. Um, this happens by custom, but you can see it's not plowed right now. So there's only one way in, one way out. So fire and uh, rescue will often have uh, you know, some issues about getting down, turning their vehicles around, being able to respond, first responders. Back up when we try that. Back up the hill, I think. I think you have a sense of this one. In the interest of time, I'd so how many units are we talking about in these two? These are two separate parts. This is 40, and this is 50, roughly. Okay. You know, there's probably 43, and, okay. you know, right. but they add up to just under, under up the hill. Right. Now, if you see, these are all now you can up. see in the, here, let's just sort of, you know, stop in here, because you can see how they're close together and how they're all lined up. There's about four or five streets through them. And there's, uh, uh, some of them are quite old. But this is municipal wastewater now. This is on municipal wastewater. This is also on a fire district. And a floodplain. And it's in a floodplain. How far back is the The floodplain is somewhat, hmm? How far back is the river? The river is the other side of the railroad tracks. Okay. The railroad tracks uh, basically is usually the cause of the flooding because there is a culvert. And the water comes down and it tries to go through the culvert at a right angle, which doesn't work. So in high water with a little ditch here, which isn't maintained uh, as well as it should be, plus the river, the water backs into here and will move through this area. So when you heard about the flooding, it was all through here. And everybody had to be evacuated in this area. You know, and the electricity had to be turned off. That was in the middle of the winter. And then to get people back in their house, you had to have an electrician come through and inspect each trailer one by one. But because at that point the wastewater wasn't built, anything that was in the yards had to be thrown out because it was contaminated and the health officer came in. So that had to happen. And, and then that was a very hard deal because it was private ownership. He should do everything, but the town had to intervene, which wasn't comfortable with some people. But the owners have uh, been billed for it, and I think they've... When was that built? That was two winters ago. Okay. I think it was two or three. So let's... Um, I think we should go up to the town office, and that's about what we can show you. If you just look into Alta, you can see how close together they are. And you're saying a lot of the units in here are now abandoned or not? No, those they're all pretty populated. Okay. It's Royal Pine, right. where there's a number, I don't know if abandoned's the exact word, but unoccupied okay. at least. And the owner, they are, well, I, I don't, some of them, you see them, you wouldn't put anybody into them but they represent a lot that somebody could live on. So they represent, you know, even in, they represent an opportunity for housing.